Hi everybody, thank you very very much for joining me this Saturday afternoon when I'm sure you've got a hundred other things that you would like to be doing but nothing as enjoyable as this, let's hope. Um, our uh, image today is apple blossom and it's just really pretty. It's it's not anything, you know, like a whole garden or a whole flower or anything. It's just this tiny part of a tree um, putting out this lovely blossom, which was too nice for me to pass by. The image is from Pixabay, I believe. Pixabay, yeah, indeed. And today we're going to be doing this in pastels. Um, I know that Paula over on Fairy Chic Emporium has been producing some wonderful mixed media pieces. They're really wonderful. And, you know, pop over to Fairy Chic Emporium, have a look at what she's doing. Um, they're great. But one of the sort of spin-offs from that is that she's been using pastels, um, both pastel pencils and uh, the big chalk-like soft pastels. So for those of you who have indulged yourself in a tin of pastel pencils, I thought that I would do this in pastel pencil, because if you've got some, you want to be using them. So, you know, you didn't buy them to sit in the tin. No art supplies are cheap, so I'm quite sure that uh, you want to get on and see what else you can do with them. Um, so today, largely, we're going to be using uh, Carbothello, Stabilo Carbothello pastels, pastel pencils, and also, um, well, I've got Caran Dash pastel pencils, but I don't think I'm going to be using them. But just to make you aware, I have got that set if I need some of the colours. And then I've got this set, which is a Faber-Castell set. I've had this so long. Uh, I'm sure that if you're looking for this, the packaging's changed. It says Faber-Castell since 1761. And as far as I can remember, that was when I bought them. Um, but inside, you see these little... They're kind of half sticks. A normal pastel would be twice that size, so these are half sticks. But there's 72 colours of them, so they, they, they cover just about everything that you need. Some are missing because I've got them, I'm using them in other projects. Um, but I would say always try and put your pastels back at the end of a project um, and keep it in some order. This isn't the best of order, but I know where they are. So they may come into play today, especially the white, I think. Um, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Oh, your commission was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. The Williams Farm, the Williams uh, Homestead. I can't remember now what the title was. But I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it was your work. I, can't, I just can't believe how, how much you've advanced. And I'm sure the people who you gave it to must have been delighted. Um, so, yeah, that's our tools of the day. Another time I will show you the big soft pastels and how delightful they are to work with. However, I think we should trot on and try and make a start with this. I've decided not to do this background as it is. I'm going to do something a little bit more contemporary, or at least I'm going to try. Um, so I've selected some pastels. It says ranch. Ranch. The Williams Ranch. It, it was lovely. Um, for those of you that haven't seen Sharon's work, it's on um, I Miss Paint a Lot's art page. Just pop over. Sister sort of it's the it's the group. This is the page. Um, <clears throat> right, so there's my choice of colours. Uh, plus, of course, this white from the Faber Castell range and this white as well, which is Carbothello, and it's getting a little bit short. Um, so it's always whites and blacks. So those are always the colours that, that you run out of first. Um, but you can replace them stick by stick or pencil by pencil. So you, you've always got a full set. Right, so what I'm proposing to do with regards to the background is to do some sort of colour blocks and for that I need my ruler which I'm not sure where it is um, you've got a ruler Mr. Fitzgerald this is in my top is those... it? oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah 
Excellent. You'll see for past, using pastels, I actually use an easel, a table easel, which uh, puts it at an angle. It's not, um, it's not so I can see perspective, although it helps. Um, it's just so that the dust from the pastels falls down. And I've got this little aluminium foil tray at the bottom to catch the dust so it doesn't go absolutely everywhere. And to keep the aliens away. Yeah, when, when I've finished pastel, put it on my head, and that way then I don't get bothered by those alien folk. Uh, right, so I'm just going to draw some lines straight down here with this blue. And when I hit the flower, I'm going to stop and carry it on after the flower is finished. Now, I'm not making these a specific width. Any old width will do. I'm just going to put another thinner one across here. It's good if you can get these straight. Um, I should have put them on before I mounted my paper. Then I could have used my T-square, which would have made them more straight. But um, so I'm really going to, I'll, I'll put all the lines on and then we'll see where we're at. I want to, I didn't actually, could you pass, pass me a few of them up and I'll talk about them. I'll talk about this for a while. And that one, please. Thanks. In the land of pastels, we kind of don't talk about paper and card and stuff like that because we're all together too snobby. We talk about supports, and the support is literally the paper or the card that you're using, but it's called a support. So, um, you don't need a trust to be pastel. No, it's not, that kind it's, of support. it's not that kind of support. No, it's just like a bit of paper. But people, I think people that do pastel work tend to be a little bit posh. I'll say that. I'm going I'm going with that. I'm saying it. Tend to be a little bit posh. And then there's me, of course. Um, this is the support that I'm using today. It's uh, De La Roni. It's called Murano. Um, this particular pad, which has 30 sheets, it, or had 30 sheets in it, it's got six colours, six sort of neutral colours in it. Um, and the paper does play a huge part in... Uh, in what you're going to put on it, you know. If you today, for example, I've chosen the green because I want the green underneath my flowers to help um, bring that color forward. So it's worth thinking about what color you're using and what you're going to actually put on it. So that's the Murano, which I, I don't I hardly ever use. That I don't really like it, and that's what I'm using today because it had green in it. This is what I do like. This is Claire Fontaine Pastel Mat. It's beloved by many pastelers. It's mm, the thing that differentiates uh, supports is the tooth that they have. And the tooth, I'm sure you're all familiar with from me talking about canvases with tooth, etc. But it's the amount of sandpaperiness it's got. And the more sandpaperiness it has, the more pastel it can stand on top of it. You know, some of the just pastel supports hardly have any tooth on and you really can only touch it with pastel and you fill the tooth. And then actually you're in a queer predicament because there's nothing you can do. Once you've filled the tooth, you can put pastel on till your heart's content, but it won't stay in the paper. It just moves around on top all over the place. Um, it's very easy to get to the stage where you fill your tooth, very. Um, and I find that this pastel mat's got rather more tooth than the Murano that I've just shown you. Therefore, it's easier to work with. There are some people who use straight up sandpaper. I have seen it on YouTube. Straight up sandpaper. Most of them use uh, 800 grit, which is fine, I'll grant you. Um, some of them use 600. And I've got a piece... Uh, it's a different brand called UART, and I've got a piece in there that's 400, is it? And 250. 
No, I couldn't be doing with that. Um, but anyway, that's just a quick word on supports. You will find your own, the thing that you love doing, the thing that um, you like the best. Um, and for me, I've found that to be pastel mat. Becky Holmes Dunlap says good information about tooth. Oh, thank you. Yeah, tooth. It's our bugbear, I'm afraid. When you get the hang of it, you know, it's perfectly fine. But um, until then, you spend a lot of time just cursing, basically. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing out any bits in between the flowers. I've transferred this on in white because I didn't want, want it to show up particularly. Um, I think that's it. This is just going to be a little narrow one. I don't really want it to be. I have transferred this onto here. I, I'm aware that you probably can't see it terribly well because I, I did it in white, as I say. But I've just completed a video that's a ragged on teddy bears and I transfer it was on an anthracite coloured paper and I transferred it on using white Sorrel wrap and it was I just couldn't get to the end of the white. It's driving me mad. Sorrel what? Sorrel transfer paper, not Sorrel wrap. Oh my goodness. I haven't done a live for so long I've forgotten how you how you do a live. That's, that's terrible. Uh, so we'll put one green down here and that's probably enough. It's only to show you vaguely kind of what it, what you could do. I think that's in there. Um, you can, you know, do many more, do many less, make them fatter, make them thinner. It's really, really, really up to you. Okay. Oh, not quite. That comes down to there. Right, okay, I think that's fine. So I'm just going to fill those in. Um, you could, and it would be a good idea to, to use um, a softer pastel for this. But, you know, I promised you uh, pastel pencils. So. <laughs> I know, Dorothy. Oh, it's been a dark few months. Really has. Flowers are just the best. I really like this uh, apple blossom though. It's kind of pretty and innocent looking. Right, what you do when you're pastling is you don't press on. Don't, don't, just don't press on. I can't ever think of a time when you do need to press on. All you're doing is like depositing a thin layer of pastel over the support. And then I'll show you what we do with it to push it back in a minute. I don't know whether you feel that this is a bit more, um, more like drawing perhaps, because you've got a pencil in your hand. Uh, it's it's not. I don't think it is anymore um, like drawing. It's just I don't know. With a brush, we seem to be fairly distanced. From what we're doing whereas this is you know intimate and head-on uh, and I like that actually so I'm just depositing a very light layer of pastel pencil over here over the areas I've marked out and then we get into uh, I'm sorry if you, whoever you are there is a proficient pastel pencil person because you won't need all these sort of all this information that I'm giving you but if you're not you'll be glad of it right if we wanted to blend for example if we wanted it to go to dark blue at this end we'd put our dark blue down now without doing anything at all to the light blue so, hi Paula thank you for joining me I've already told people how wonderful you are but I'll tell them again <laughs> nip over to Fairy Chic Emporium have a look at what Paula is producing in the way of mixed media art 
the girl is so clever. She's using, definitely using mixed media. Um, and it's worth looking at. She's got some process videos on there of, you know, her pieces from start to absolute finish. You'll be surprised what goes into them. You'll also be surprised the time it takes. She has got some, some of her pieces up for sale on her website, fairychicemporium.co.uk. Um, so go and have a look at them. They're great. Right, so as I was saying, if you wanted to, to shade this dark towards the side, say, you'd literally put your dark on over the top and light maybe this side, put your white on or whichever, light blue, whatever, down that side. And then you would do what we're about to do now. Hi, Sue. Nice to hear from you. Now, if you've got a tiny finger, you could probably get in there, but my finger's not tiny enough. So you need something to push it back. Now, this is a whole other subject, a whole other category of what people use to push their pastel down into the tooth of the paper. You can get things called colour shapers, which are like little silicon spatulas that you'd use in the kitchen, except they're um, tiny. <laughs> um, you can, you, well, do a, do a tool here called a blender. I've tried it and tried it. I can't get it to blend anything, but, um, you know, it's there. Or recently we have discovered these and these are paper made ink joy stylus. And it's a pen at one end, paper made pen, and on the other end it's a stylus. You know, like you, on your iPad or iPhone or whatever, and it blends pastel beautifully for those. I mean, my finger's not that size. It's bigger and splotchier than that. So this can get into places where my finger can't. And so you just push this pastel back, push it into the tooth, which will allow you then to get another layer on. So a bit like acrylics or oils or whatever, it's all about the layers. Now, supposing you wanted a colour that you haven't got in your... Um, box of tricks push that back then put for example if I wanted green I'd put yellow on top of that and then blend that into it and you'd end up with your yellow and blue equals green so that's fairly straightforward this um, support that I'm using which I'm not used to using seems to want to take quite a bit of pastel so I'll just push that one down in and we're going to have to go over with another layer. Now then when you get to this stage what you don't want to be doing is putting your hand on there because as soon as you do you will pick up bits of pastel on, on, on the bottom of your hand there from there. And then you move your hand and lo and behold, that beautiful flower that you did that was perfect has now got a big blue splotch in it. So take care. And you can use any bit of paper, copy of paper, anything. I use this glassine paper because I happen to have it and it's ideal for it. It works project after project. But photocopy of paper will work. Just keep an eye that it's not picking up anything on the bottom. So put that over the bits that we've done just to protect any... Um, blending that we don't want to happen and when blending happens that we don't want we call it smudges don't we so we don't want any spludges smudges even so, did you call it worse yeah I know well it's horrible when it happens and you realise what you've done so it's a really good habit to get into just using uh, a piece of paper like this just to shield shield you, shield it right so that's now been pushed back if I was, if this was for me or a commission or whatever, I would go ahead and put another coat on there because it is looking slightly patchy. But you know, we've got flowers to paint, people. Come on, we need to get cracking here. So let's just put that little yellow band in. I'm conscious that my lives are always ridiculously long. Um, so I'm trying, really, really going to try and make them not as long. So because of that, you might not get all of these blossoms done today. 
but as long as we get one and you can go on off and uh, use your pastel pencils for things other than you're going to use them um, with Paula then I have done my job so out with the uh, blender again well, those blenders expensive Mr fix it it's that long ago since I bought them I'm not sure but I can easily look them up I think we've got a set of five uh, four. We came in a pack of four pack of four and I've been using this as the third piece that I've used them on and I'm not seeing any any wear and tear. After you've done a bright colour like that, it's a good idea. It's a good idea anyway to have a damp damp rag like this around. Um, I'll tell you again, go to the charity shop, look in the bin that says dog towels and pick yourself up some towels. Um, Stick them through the washer of you, you know, and chop them up and there you go. You've got rags for art. So I'm just putting my glassine over here and pushing this back in. About um, four to five pounds before. All right. So about a pound. Isn't it? Pound a pen-ish. Um, I guess you can find them in Smith's and whatever. Now you saw me there putting my glassine over and pushing it down. That's just because I couldn't get the... Uh, this really in it's just a bit too thin just for that so if you put your glass in over it really push it down in it does the same sort of job and we've got a green one as well so once again protecting the work that we've done let's go around here a lot of people don't make this mark and I'm not sure I use use pencils like this either. I think it's because the lines ordinarily are a colour like that which puts just a little bit more pastel down. So I'm sorry for you guys that joined up, joined in thinking you were going to get an acrylic tutorial. Um just need to make a mark there. Not sure where that comes to. There somewhere. Is that a flower? That's a flower. What's this? Oh I think I'll have drawn it in originally anyway. I'll go with that. I'll go with what I can see. Did you guys see my rag doll with the teddy bear? <gasps> it was really nice and I really enjoyed seeing it. Yeah. Show it to them, please. I'm not sure what's going on here. What's that? Oh, it's a petal. Mm -hmm. should make a second version. Yeah, there's uh, my original, and there's my second version. And the reason that I did two images, I don't know where to put them so you can see them both, like that, um, was because I didn't video the first one. <laughs> oh, like an idiot. I know better than that. I know that you have to video everything you do so it can go up somewhere. And I didn't. I didn't video it. So I spent uh, yesterday evening doing this other version of her. She's a bit darker. She's a bit grungy. I did her, as you can see, on anthracite paper because I wanted to get this wall looking quite worn and old. Like they've just been left there on the shelf by some child. And they need me to come along and love them. <laughs> so uh, that's those. That video will be coming out on Patreon as soon as it's processed. Um... I think I've already told you about Patreon pretty much. It's a site where you can go and support. Well, I say support me. It's Yes, it is me directly. But it allow, any income that I get from that allows me to carry on doing the free videos on YouTube. And I'm 
a real proponent of that. I, th- I think it's great if artists and art education is free for, for everyone. But as you as you all know, art utensils are not uh, cheap. So I'm just asking for you to go into the... There are three tiers that you can join at. Uh, the least expensive one is $4 a month. Um, for that, you get a whole new exclusive video that hasn't been, won't be anywhere else. Oh, I know, Paula. Smith says, Heck, I thought it was a real one. <laughs> Dorothy, did you really? <laughs> I'm not sure whether it's going to be a doll or you, but. <laughs> oh, dear me. So once again, we've we've uh, pushed that in with the blender, but I'm just going to go over it with a glassine paper and really push it in there so it's nice and low in the tooth so it's not going to feel like it wants to come out. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do for the background. Excuse me while I just have a little drink. It's mightily dry around these parts. Thank you, excuse me and all that. Right, so it's time to move on to our our blooms. And in this little live, I might just get done the one. I'm thinking that might be the way of it, but we'll see. So I need um, a nice light green for the center. I like getting the center in first. I'll try. Let's try and get into the habit of using your, your paper all the time and let, letting it follow you around. So that's a really nice citrus green. Should stand out quite nice. Just fill, fill the centre in as we have before. I'm just going to add some shading to that. I don't really want detail in this, but I can't help myself. <laughs> I, just, I just can't help myself. So I'm just going to put a little bit under there. If you're watching this and thinking, ah, kids have got some crayons, I bet they'd do that. No, they don't. I mean, coloured pencils are a whole... They're a whole thing, aren't they, Mr Fix-It? And then uh, not Crayolas, I can tell you. So I'm just working my my uh, Pastels are basically blender pigment. into the edge of there, so you can see now it's it's. Well, you can't actually see. Take my word for it; it's shaded. It looks a lot better. Yeah, pastels are pigment, aren't they? The more more akin to watercolor, really, I suppose. The the pigment stuck together, um, whereas crayons aren't right so i think what we'll do with this is use i'm very tempted to use a block but i won't i'm going to stick to the pencils that that, that i said i would so i'm just going to go in over all of this petal oops there goes my point if you put any pressure at all on pastels you're liable to snap the points uh, it's a very delicate medium. It's a lovely medium. I love it. Of course, colouring pencils, colour pencils, um, well, you can get those in as many um, brands as you can get pastels. It's a whole new thing. I am using um, Murano, De La Roni Murano. I'm not sure I'd recommend it particularly. Um, it seems to be taking up loads and loads of pastel, which actually for a beginner is good. That's good. It's got, I was explaining uh, earlier, this sort of bumpiness that you can see on it or not, that's the tooth. That's the tooth of the paper. More tooth your paper has, more pastel you can put on it before it gets saturated and then you can't do anything with it. It just moves around 
all over the place. What I would recommend is this uh, Clairefontaine pastel mat. It's not cheap, what is, um, but it's it, it comes in six different sets, I think. This is set number two with these four colours in. Um, so, you know, think about what you do. Do you do mostly landscapes? Would it benefit you to have green pastel mat so you can perhaps leave areas without any pastel on at all? Um, you know, do you do animal portraits, in which case it might be an idea to have brown or black or anthracite there? Um, you know, it's it, you need to think about it because it is a bit of an investment. So I'm just going around these and I'm making them all this uh, very light grey colour. See, the big soft pastels, this pretty much would be done by now. But I'm curious myself to see how this Murano handles this. I generally, generally like De La Roni stuff. Um, but I haven't pastelled for a long time. And I can't remember now why I liked some things and didn't, didn't like others. So I'm having to relearn it. Seems to come down there, into there. There are a million tips and tricks um, with regards to pastelling, most of which you will find out because you're in the middle of a crisis. I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't shade this, whatever. Um, and you'll soon learn via YouTube, probably, how to put it right. There's not that many pastel videos on YouTube, to be honest. Compared to acrylics. I mean, the YouTube is lousy with acrylic um, tutorials. But not so many on pastels. And I will say the majority of them that I've seen have been British people. Um, and pretty much, with the exception of a couple that I can think of, men. So draw your own conclusions. I'd say British men of a certain age like pastelling. Do you pastel, Mr. Fixit? I do occasionally. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that you can see, yes you can, you can see this is just coming up and it's all one colour, it's just this grey which is giving us a nice um, background to work from. And one coat would never normally be enough but it's over this lovely green so in this instance it is enough. Okay, so there we are. So for this, I'm pretty sure I can get my fingers in there. So let's, let's have a go and just put that, push it back into the tooth of the paper. It blends it all out, get a lovely smooth finish. And then we can start putting the details. I'm not going to put massive details on here. Did any of you see my commission piece that I did? The um, the birds, that surreal image of all <laughs> of all these birds, eleven British birds and a penguin, <laughs> and I was asked to create a piece that had all of them in it. I did it. I did it though. I did it. Right. So next thing is let's get the um, some blue just in the. I want the same blue that I used. Uh, for the background and I just actually I need I just need some white in there just to mark off where my where my petals are going
Might as well try and make it easy on ourselves. Okay. Oh, that one. Looks like it's not connected very well. Right, so I just want a little bit of blue down each sort of side. And I'm holding the pencil like this, so I'm, I'm applying no pressure, none. I'm just letting the pastel just do its own thing. I'm guiding it, but I am in no way putting pressure on it. The teddies in there? No, your commission. Oh, oh boy, was I sick of details. I mean, thank you. You you know how I love detail. Anybody that knows me knows I love detail. But I was I was so fed up of painting birds, browns and blacks and creams. I had the smallest paintbrush in the whole entire total world. Um. Oh yeah, and then I got all that in, and then the lady said, "Could you put a dragonfly and a ladybird in it?" I said, "I'm sorry." I said, "I bet you're not." I said, "Well, I might be a bit." So let's just push those back again with uh, with our stick. So we're blending them out. That's got a bit of green on it there. Obviously, I haven't been following my own rules. Doesn't really matter. So you see, as we push them back, they're there, but they're not there. It's a hint of a tint, folks. Didn't there used to be a hair thing called that? Hair dye. Hint of a tint. Am I making it up? I could be making it up. <laughs> <laughs> I sleepwalk people uh, I don't know if any of you do it but I do it virtually every night um, I say things to Mr Fix it I go places, I do things and I have no memory of it whatsoever none it's a bit disconcerting really but um, I'm kind of used to it now I think it explains the perpetual tiredness. So there we are. I'm actually not rushing with this. Usually on lives, I'm, uh, you know, I'm rushing, rushing, rushing. But I don't want to rush on this. I just I don't feel inclined to rush today, <laughs> which isn't normal for me. I know. So. Time to get some serious white out. And the most serious that I have at the moment out here, there are other pastels that would give you more white in a go, but this is Faber Castell block. And I'm just going to go around the edge, find a square edge here. And I'm going to just really, really go into that edge this down here really lay some pastel on that and that's what these blocks or soft pastels are really good at laying down a lot, a lot of pastel. So once we've done this, we'll have a look at the centre of the flowers see if they need any um, cheering up with a bit of white. kind of suspect they will. I 
So, so far so good then. Everybody can do this, can't they? I've done anything that is that you need years of skill for, have I? Nothing. You can do it. Right, okay, so that's given us some nice, bright, bright, heavy outlines. We've got this bluish hint in the, in the middle, and we've got some grey, which is going to show up the white really well. So where else do we need the white? Well, let's look at this. Let's look at it petal by petal. It's got a white section that comes up the middle. Now, don't be too um, fussy. This is this this isn't fussy. You can be fussy, but this is not the time. So white up there, and the sections of it coming down here. And this one, it's pretty much half and half. This one, it's on the tip. It's really, really, really white. And then this one down here. Go right up to the line that you drew. Otherwise it'll look a bit daft. So I think I'm just, it's not on the picture, but I'm just going to suggest some central highlight that we're picking up there. Right, so I think that looks nice. Um, I think when we get the centre in, it'll look fine. Are we looking at this at a funny angle? Because it's a different shape. Well, you're looking at it with a slightly oblique angle because of the, we're pointing straight down and uh, tilted up. I, I should put it down then, I guess. So I've got this quite bright blue that I've used um, before, and there's just little sections of it that I'm going to put in that I can see. Okay, so it just really needs now a thorough blending. Blow off the whatever is loose. Clean my stylus object and just force that back down into the paper along with the blues and everything else. Carol Bodson says, uh, I love the way you say no years of skill needed. Well, there isn't. Would I lie to you? A lot of arty stuff is just getting the will to get on and do it. Because you can watch hours and hours and hours and hours of YouTube. Watch it from now to the day you die and you won't be any better of an artist than you were when you started watching it. Really what you've got to do is pick up your brush, pick up your whatever, your pencil, and get cracking and that way you will learn so I'm trying to leave the, the very white bits on the outside and for those I'm just I'm tamping down instead of blending well I hope in a way that I can reduce the hours and years or whatever of learning um, because trust me, if there's a mistake to be made, I've made it. And so if I can help you not make that mistake, well, time well spent. You can see with the blocks, as much more dust comes off it. Um, and actually this Murano paper, when I use the pastel mats, there's not this much dust comes off it.
and it's blending the blue in a little bit. Blending some of that white in, but leaving quite a lot. So um, I'm going to put this down because we're at this strange angle. Is that it? <laughs> I'm going to have to put something in there because. Right, that's as good as we can get, I think, guys. So now it's time for the centre of that flower. And uh, we've got the very centre in, but it's got some um, mid green uh, sort of that sort of thing coming off it. And there's loads of them. Oh, so you're all new to it. So what do you use? Are you using acrylics? So on the ends of these, actually there's some other ones as well that are sort of a, a light, light mould. I shall call them light mould. Um, and this needs sharpening. Right, sharpening is another thing, guys, that people talk about with pastels all the time. Don't sharpen them in a pencil sharpener. It won't work. It'll ruin your pastel. It'll cost you money because you'll just keep chewing the wood up and the actual pastel just keep snapping. So please take my word for it, although I know you won't. I know you'll try it in a pencil sharpener, but it doesn't work and it ends up quite expensive. The posh gentlemen of England who um, do their pastels on YouTube, they favour uh, a knife, an exacto knife, Stanley knife, or even just a razor blade, um, and they sharpen their uh, pen, uh, pastels with that. I don't trust myself too much with that. So I have, I have this, it's called a swordfish. Ooh, where are we? Here, swordfish. And you just pull it out like that, stick your uh, pencil in, it grabs it, and then you turn it to to get it sharp. I can't remember how much they were, but they're worth it because they've saved me loads of actual pastels. How much were they, Mr. Fix It, please? So there's some of these quite longer ones coming out as well. This is just flicking like you would with a paintbrush. Right, so that's our centre and we've got some brown bits in it and some orange. Well, you soon make that back, wouldn't you, though, on what you save? Yeah. I'm sorry, those pencils are... £2.18 individually. Yeah. So yeah, you'd soon make it back. I know, even as I'm saying this, I know that some of you are going to think it somehow doesn't apply to your pastels. Mm, Jack R one's about 25. All right. So that's the swordfish. There is another one, which is this one. That is a variable point. And it's called Jack R. Um, and same principle, you pull the thing out, put your pencil in, it's a crank handle, um, but it does have a knob on the end that you can turn to make, um, to alter how sharp it goes, whether you want it actually pin sharp at the end, or will something, was it, were you looking for something else? So I'll just put these brown bits in. Around. Acrylic and chalk paints. Ah, right. And some patio paints that you already have. Okay. Well, don't forget to show us what you do with them. So that's pretty much the centre of our of our flower. So we'll just go over it, push it down in. What time are we at? Got, we've got time for another one, another flower maybe. Yes, yeah. Uh, All oh, right, okay. Um, so let's just go ahead with the same procedure. 
I won't get time to finish all this today before I bore you to tears. So um, when you've gone, I will I'll finish it and I'll pop the I'll pop the finished picture up for you. So how many of you actually have pastels? How many of you do you think you would um, would be using pastels, be it pencils or soft pastels or whatever? Um, I'm curious to know really. So as I said, I've just put that little line around the bottom and I'm just going to blend that in, blend into that little line, but not over it. So it then just blends it in with that bit there. So there's our centre done. I'm just going to wipe that because I'm going to pick it up. I know it's got green on it. Um, and then grey. I can't really remember which grey I used. Must have been this one, I think. So for all you folks at home thinking, well, that looks easy, anybody could do that. You're dead right. You're absolutely right on the money. Anyone can do it. There are, you know, it gets more complex as you as you get further into it. Things like shading and um, mixing colours on the palette are on your work. You know, where you put a couple of colours down, as I said to you before, about yellow and blue, you get your green through it. Um, and how you do that, how you know when your tooth's full, you just. But a lot of it is just common sense. You get you get a feel for it. You know what you're doing. I think that paint, you know, painting is a good good way into pasteling because you've got your eye in now. You know, all the people that have been with me from the start. You, you, you know, you've now got your eye in, you know what looks right, what doesn't look right, and how to fix it, which is a big thing. Uh, unfortunately, they are a different thing. Although I'm quite sure you could have done this with um, with pencils, to be honest. This doesn't seem to have anything else apart from three petals. Fair enough. So let's go in with the white. So we're following around the top and down the side. Same here. Just we'll just get that in. And then we'll see actually what we're supposed to have in. Because I like these big, bright, bright white edges on the apple blossom. You know, if it was against the sky, these, these look fantastic, these lovely bright bits. So let's have a look and see what we really need. So this has got a lot of white down this side. And similarly, this has obviously the sun shining on these ones from this direction. You know, all the same rules apply, guys. You know, you you always have light. You always have it in a direction, and everything must must abide by those laws. There's certain you know people say they like breaking the rules. That's fine, um, but please learn the rules to break first. And light coming in one direction is critical. I mean, further on, if you're going to paint um, your living room in the evening and you've got lamps on everywhere, you will have multiple sources of light. But we're not at that stage yet. We just have one. Um, there's a tiny little bit there, which I didn't notice. Okay, so I'll leave that there. I'll get the blue out because there is a fair bit of blue. Put that in. There's not so much blue on the other side, actually. Similarly here, there's blue down the middle and over to this side. And here it's just centre, it's just in the middle.
Okay, so where's my blendy blendy? So try and leave the nice white bits around the top. We can put them in again, it's not a problem, but um, might as well try and leave them, I think. It's a bit too much of a straight line there. So, yeah, okay, just perhaps need a bit more down that edge. It's a very definite edge, that one. Uh, this is also very, very, very white, as is this one. Give those a quick blend again. Pushing it in all the time. Try and catch the dust if you can and push it in as well. It's far better than having it around in the atmosphere. Right, okay. So we just need a centre on that, but I'm just going to push it down with my glassine paper and the heel of my hand. And put the centre in, uh, which I used that for. going to put some orange bits and bats on it. I'm going to put some in places where there's not even a stem to it to be honest. So I like that one better than, than the original so I'm just going to just go back over here a bit. Put some more yellow in. Some green. It's not yellow. I'm going to go over my brown with orange. So I don't like them. I much prefer that. Let's push that down then. Um, and that's probably as far as we can get today, I think. But there we are. Two little blossoms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this rather impromptu Sunday afternoon live. Uh, I wasn't scheduled, even in my own head, of uh, coming on live today, but I just wanted, I'd left the apple blossom sort of half done, I'd sort of showed you what I wanted to show you really, um, except then when I looked at it, walked away and looked back, I thought I just can't leave it without the details. It's just, it's just not me. So I'm just doing this to kind of catch up to um, put more details in the apple blossom. I have put more details in these two, which were the two that we did yesterday. And I've come up against that thing that I was telling you when your the tooth of your paper is full, so you can't realistically put any more pastel into it. I'd really like the, the outer perimeter of these petals to be really much more white. And I just can't, with what I've got out at the moment, I just can't get them any more white. I'm sure if I had a really soft pastel, um, I could do it. But I've only got um, really pastel pencils out at the moment. And they're just not, they're not cutting it. We need a soft pastel. In fact, Mr F... Could you have a look through 
Where, where is the innocent ones? Uh, the, the big box behind you. Uh, no, there's a big green box of unison pastels. Just looking for a white. Might be on the bottom there, actually. Okay. The, the bottom of there. Paula says hello. Hi, Paula. Up to arrival in the editing now, I think. Oh, no. I know. She's going to catch you later. Yeah, without a doubt. Enjoy your editing, although I know you won't. It's a pain. And Ziggy's popped along. Hello, Ziggy. Nice to have you with us. It's a shame that you've joined us when we're doing flowers because we've been doing lots of other exciting stuff. Did you see the rag doll that I did? Um, in fact, I'm sure you saw the rag doll. Anyway, let's press on with these three while Mr. Fixer has a, a look for um, a white, very soft pastel and see if we can get that uh, in. So let's move over to this one. Remember I was telling you yesterday about not putting your hand down on what you've just done. Um, so we'll put this. This is glassine paper for those of you who were asking. It's um, in its full sheets. I use it be between my the pieces that are finished, so they don't stick to the piece in front. It's important when you're doing acrylics because they're, they're prone to doing that. Also important when you're doing pastels because it protects the pastel. Um, but in the meantime, I use them for not putting my hand straight down onto the, the art piece that I'm doing. And I also use them over it just to push the, the pastel back into the page. So that's what that is. So let's push on anyway with... Uh, now, the, there's several ways we could go here. We could choose to make the shadow bits grey or blue. A light green would also work or a cream and I, I applied a little bit of sort of rich cream it's it's this color um, into into some of these here I thought about it too late and my tooth was full by then but I like that idea it, it's sort of a warm tone up against these um, oh that was the other thing I did I put some um, ah lovely here's a lovely big soft pastel it's a let, yeah let's have that brush. <laughs> if you're into pastels, this is orgasmic. I should have warned you, really. <laughs> uh, this these are pastels made by a company called Unison. They are largely agreed to be the best pastels that you can buy. They are phenomenal. They're fantastic. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that as a beginner you go out and get these. The, you need a bit of experience with pastels really to be able to use these. Um, but they're gorgeous. I mean, look at, look at them. It's like a box of jewels. In fact, it's better than a box of jewels to me. They're gorgeous. I love them. So, um, however, as much as I love them, you can't really... Thanks ever so much. You can't really use them on this uh, Murano paper. The, too much comes off them. The tooth would be fill, filled immediately. Um, but I'm just going to try and see if I can get some, some white down on the edges of here. If I can get it just to, uh, just to take a little bit of it. Yeah, I think it's accepting that. Very often if you get stuck and you can't get anything else on, these really soft pastels will do the trick for you. Of course I will, in the fullness of time, be doing a, a tutorial on these wonderful soft pastels. But I'm sure that you can see well, maybe you can't see because you, you're a long way away, but the white from this uh, very soft pastel is really giving us the contrast that we were looking for and I hadn't managed to achieve with the pencils. Pencils can, they're great, they have their place, but they can be quite an insipid uh, colour compared to the pigmentation that you get in these lovely big soft ones. And once you get the hang of the big um, 
Unisons or whatever brand you choose to have, um, you'll never go back really. You'll never go back. I don't know what's going on there. This one comes over the top. So I just want to highlight these edges um, a little bit. Bring some white down into them. Not sure how long that's going to stay on there. Let's hope a long, long time. Um, I mean, even as I'm, as I've got my glassine over the top, you can see that white. It's really uh, standing out. Could you just zoom in a little bit, please? Yeah. You said you woke up from a nap, and there you were. Oh, I just appeared. I appeared to you like like a religious event. Well, then you could still be asleep having a nightmare. Oi! That's not very nice. Mm -hmm. That's as far as I can go without you moving it around a bit. Okay. I just want you to be able to see that when you get completely stuck, soft pants, pa soft pants. See, one conversation with Ziggy and I'm off being rude. I don't mean that, Ziggy. At all. Just it's probably better than hard pants, to be fair. Soft pants? Yeah. Talking of pants, <laughs> I know you don't need to know this. This is like the last thing that you need to know ever in your life. Did any of you ever used to watch Last of the Summer Wine with Compo, who is a real scruffy creature? Uh, very lovable, but scruffy. And you will remember, if you did that he used to always wear pants that were look at the dust that comes off those it's just um they're just a different animal to pencils no more with it thank you uh, i'm trying to use this easel and it doesn't he's 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 going outdoors pants that he used to wear trousers were um how can I describe them? Well, full of holes, really. That's how I'll describe them. Um, and nobody ever knew how they hung together. Can I just say before I go on to compo, look at the difference that's made. So, Dorothy, if you were going to do flowers, you were looking at doing hawthorn, I think, which is beautiful. Um, I'd say get yourself a little set of um, soft pastels. You can buy these in half stick. And that's perfectly fine because most of the time I end up breaking mine in half anyway so I can get some more sharp edges around where they've broken. So don't shy away from buying uh, half sticks. You know, it's the, it's fine, it's good. It'll get you on the on the right road. Jumbo sticks as well. Yeah, they come in jumbo sticks. <laughs> that's jumbo and that's a whole one. I mean... I can't say anything about it. It's just jumbo. 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 Right, so this moves us on then to this this one here. So I'm going to leave the very white sections alone because I'm going to come in later on with a unison and smarten those up. And I was saying to you, my choices of what to do the shadows in are this lovely cream colour, a blue colour, a grey colour, and this is a very dark green. If I'm sticking... Ziggy says she's naked again. Be still my beating heart. Um, right, I'm just... I'm just, just okay. Um, Maybe we should do this in FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to tell you about Compo's trousers, which really were a series of ho holes, um, which were sort of held together by the the odd thread, etc. Um, and the pants that I'm wearing today would give him a run for his money. I don't I don't know how I've never had a, a garment of clothing that's fallen into holes. I've just it just it's just never happened, you know what I mean? But I was sitting last night and I was I, was, I thought I can feel something down down the side of my leg. <laughs> when I looked it's like it's a four inch hole down the side seam that's just it's just a hole 
And when I looked around further, there were more, <laughs> more holes. So, of course, I stood up, instantly threw them in the bin and got a clean pair. Not. That's why I'm wearing them today. I, Mr. Fix is outraged. But, you know, that's life, isn't it? It's life. They're comfortable. I love them. Right, let's get on with some painting here. I don't know what's going on with this. It seems very unstable. I can't paint on that. Forever, ever going on. That's it up a bit. Well, that's where I had it yesterday. Oh, no, that's all right. I think folk can see that. Yeah. Let me, which way do I need to move? That way we bit. Right, okay. I'm going to crack on now because um, I'm just filling your head with, with ridiculousness here. I have given these one coat of white pencil, um, just so I'm not pastling straight onto the paper. I'm just now going to mark in where the, the petals are, just to make it a little bit easier for me. Um, around there. And this one's fairly obvious. It comes up here you see the see the difference between putting that white in from the soft and the white in from the pastel I mean it's like the two different animals all together you know right so that's my my borders in this one up here seems to have a lot a lot of blue in it so I'm going to put that in Have you been for your Sunday lunch or Sunday breakfast, is it, you go for, Ziggy? I don't know, but every time you post it, I think, oh, I'm really hungry. <gasps> There's quite a lot of grey down here. I think Mr Fixer is making a pastel painting in the corner very quietly are you i'm just trying out that card that we got it's all right the okay there's no paint in the such right an experiment an experiment fair enough so then we need a lighter gray which is probably this one um and that sort of goes over everywhere pretty much into put it down into the colors that you've just put in which will have the effect of blending them um and you know they'll still be there but they'll be blended okay get your blendy tool that i explained to you yesterday and i am actually going to blend these not just tamp them back in Right, that sort of leaves this gap in the middle that's very white. Um, so I'm just going to use my pencil at this stage. See how far we can get with a pencil. So it's white on the top. Well, it doesn't want to impart a whole load of pencil. That's a Carbothello. Let's try Caran Dash, see what, they, what she's got to say about life. Yeah, that's much more pe uh, pencil uh, um, pastel. That's putting down these caran dashes unless you actually are a millionaire uh, or you know a millionaire who's going to do buy them for you they are prohibitively expensive i get most of my art supplies off uh youtube uh, no no ebay um mr fix it sees them and buys them for me otherwise I tell you I would never have never ever have had Caran Dash ever that's too expensive she said she went to the garden centre for a full English with walnut cake for food and she's just sent off the Andy Hobbit to look up the group <laughs> oh dear well I hope you enjoy it that's all I can say I've had my dinner today already if we do a live around four o'clock, I like to have my dinner before um, we do it. Otherwise, um, by the time you've done the live and then calm down after it, 
yeah, I know it doesn't take a lot of calming down from, but, you know, lives are kind of stressful things, really, in their own way. And uh, so that, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think that's got enough shading on. Um, I, I really quite like that as far as it goes. So, yeah, I like to have my dinner early. And today we had, um, I'm not going to use this cream, I don't think. I might just put a little bit in the centre there because I really do like it. I'm going to use the block instead of the pencil. It's a little Faber Castell block. I'm just going to put a little bit of this warmth into that petal. Okay, that's had enough of our of our time now. So um, back onto the grey. It's a lot of grey. It's, it's it's the shadows from everywhere else that are being cast onto it. So yeah, be all right with the walnut cake. I'm not I'm not a lover of nuts at all. Um, but coffee cake, mm, I love coffee cake. I'm diabetic, so I can't really eat any of these things, you understand. But I can fantasise. I'm just going to introduce some blue now into that. It's gentle swirls. Did you all see my little rag doll that I did? Um, she is now framed and looking very smart. Look this off. I did two versions of that because the first one that I did, we didn't video because I didn't think it would turn out too well. So, you know, when Mr. Fixit said, shall we, shall we video it? You know what you said? Don't do anything without video on it. I said, no, not this one, though, because I don't think it's going to turn out too well. Uh, then it turned out really quite well. And um, we didn't have a video of it, so I had to go back and do another copy of it, which I didn't mind, really. I loved doing it. Something so different. So now on the lookout for vintage toys. Pictures of vintage toys. They've got to be sort of copy, well, not sort of, they've got to be copyright free. Um, which, you know, limits your options, really. So all the best ones have got copyrights on them. So this is quite a dark leaf uh, petal, should I say. But I'm just going to put a little bit of that um, cream into it. And this white that's here, I don't really need to go into too much detail with because we're going to come back in with the uh, soft pastel. So this one here is bent over and there's just a little bit of um, green just in the sort of top part of this. And then a bit of grey. I can't even remember which grey I was using now. This one. When you're uh, pasteling, same when you're painting, really, whatever you're doing, um, you saw that lovely big box of unison that I had. And if I pick one up, use it for something, and then put it back in the box, when I look back in the box, I can't remember which one it was with the best will in the world. You know, there's sort of five or six. Um, soft pastels that are all variations on a theme in that box so I can't remember which one it was so get yourself a dish or a tray or a box or something a little Tupperware thing you know and put the, the pastels that you've used into that box then when you come to want to use them again you know it must be in this box it's got to be in here um, rather than have you know all this set out around me and basically, I could have used anything. I haven't really got a clue. So it's a good tip to um, to remember that one. Just keep the ones that you're using out. And then you won't get so confused. Everybody does it instantly. It's not just me that gets confused. Just put a little bit of this in here. Only because I'm liking this cream an awful lot in there. And we'll just tamp that down. Whoop, wrong end. So 
So getting set up with pastels needn't be a huge expense, although it could be. I think there's a bit more grey in that actually than I've put in. I'm just going to come in and just put some more grey in. Put some clothes on, Ziggy. Don't eat your dinner naked. Well, you can, if you want. Though I would recommend a salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't spill that gravy where it shouldn't go. Right, okay, so we've got these three petals here. Let's go in with the big soft pants. <laughs> I seem to be stuck on soft pants today. Soft pastels. Let's get this right. Don't want to be offending people on a Sunday. Well, any day, really, I don't want to offend people. So this comes down here and there's quite a strike of that uh, white. And then it's over the top and then it's down where the petals separate. There's another bit comes down here. And this bit at the top is really quite white. I think I'm just going to have to put a little bit in there because it's just not going to look light enough uh, if I don't. So I'll just push that in. Yeah. Just brings them to life, I think you'll agree. section here. It just comes down. And this one here has got a bit that's sort of folded over on the top. I'll just add that to the highlighter. It's not really, but we haven't got in our picture all the thing all the things that are casting light, so it still makes sense. Look how nice and bright white that is through there. Right, okay, I think it's time that we put the, um, the orange on. And I think I used green for the yeah, let's sharpen my green so I've got nice. Nice point. And then these all come up. Up into the, the petals, and there's quite a few of them. And then it's the orange, just all nice and sharp. And you can put these anywhere. It doesn't have to be at the end of the, of the whatever you call a bit that carries them, the stem. I'm just going to add another couple up there. One up there, possibly, and I think that's... I think that's good, I'll call that good. So did I speak to you about fixative yesterday, guys? Did I, Mr. F, can you remember? Uh, you may have mentioned it when the tooth is full. Ah, right, yeah. So not necessarily as a final... I'm just going to add a little bit more to this, a little bit more bright white to this one, just to feel... He needs a little bit more. I've slept yeah, I've slept as well, which is unusual for me. So I was telling you yesterday, I think that I uh, suffer from sleepwalking, which sounds like it's going to be funny, but trust me, when you do it, it's not really. Um, and I didn't sleep all last night, which is the first time in ages. So I feel suitably rested today. 
Anyway, back to fixatives, which is what we were talking about. Um, a lot of people spray their uh, work with hairspray. I think when you're a student or um, when you're just doing something that you're going to hang up in your own house, that's that's probably acceptable. Um, let me just put in with the white where these... Now, that petal there is part of this flower here. So just be careful that we know that. And this petal that comes around here is part of that one as well. So we know that now, so we don't need to um, get into trouble with that. This is pretty grey. I'm going to use go in with grey here. So I'm just I'm not laying down a whole load of pastel here. It doesn't it really doesn't need it. This is pretty much all in the shade. Better being all in the shade than all in the uh, anything else. So I'm going to give this uh, this one starts to get lighter about here. So whatever was casting the shadows moved a little bit. Um, this one doesn't look like the the one on my reference picture, but we'll just uh, live with it. So I'm just going to push that back in so we've got a nice darkish base to work from. So I'm just using small circles to push it in. And you can blend it around at the edges so you haven't got a sharp sharp edge where it begins and ends. I'm sure you'll agree that blending pastels is much, much, much easier than blending two colours with acrylics, um, which sometimes can be a little bit challenging. Now, I, I'm, I'm sort of seeing some blue here, but it's I don't think it's the darkest of blues. So let's just come in with this light blue. No, that's not going to do the job, so I'm going to have to come in with the darker blue and it's just some darker bluey sort of areas to it um this one in particular you know put in what you can see what you believe to be there So I'm semi sort of blending and semi tamping. Just push all that dust down into your paper. Paid good money for that dust. <laughs> and you paid good money for the paper. Yeah, I, I think um, I think that's okay. Let's put the bright white on and see <coughs> what it looks like. See if we need to come back with anything to cheer its life up with. This comes round, but it also sort of it's got this thicker bit of white at the top. A little flash down the side of but this looks like it's sort of folded in. So we'll do our best with that. It's a long time since I used soft pastels, so um I'm experiencing what you will experience with them, I guess. And that is that they aren't the easiest things to use without any practice. 
They feel like a very blunt instrument at the moment and I know that's not true because I did some really delicate pieces of, of work with these so I know that that I know it's not true but for the moment I just don't want to go where I want to put them. Hi uh, thank you for joining us again uh, it's really nice of you thank you where are you in the world? <laughs> right, well, that's what I've got on. I don't know whether to put any more on. Or whether I'm just simply going to overpower it. It's a shame putting more on. Yeah, that's fine now there. I like that, like that. So push it right back in. Very miserable day up here in uh, the very top of the Lake District. It's There's no sun to be seen. It looks like it might break out into rain at any moment. Um, it has the feel of a October sort of day. So you can see what a huge difference that white self pastel's made. I would have been here for a hundred years trying to get the pencils to give me this effect. But having said that, the pencils give you the fine the fine work. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this cream into here because I've put it into um the other ones and I really like it. I love this cream and white together. Just rub that in. So that only leaves us with one, one flower to go. Oh, this one. This one is actually part of that. Doesn't matter because it's sort of looking at it at us backwards anyway. Now there is a division here, and it's about there of the petals. So once again, they're quite grey. So I'm just going to go in with the grey. Carol would like to know what is the difference between pastel pencils and coloured pencils, and how do you know which is which? That's a really good question, Carol. Um, I haven't got any coloured pencils on me at the moment. The pastel pencils are made up of pigment and a binder. Actually, so are colouring pencils. You know, you you. You, you crayons if you want to call them that um, it's just what the binder is really and what the pigment is when you use a pastel pencil you will immediately know it's a pastel pencil because it's very dry and you really have to persuade it to move on the paper whereas colouring pencils they're smooth they want to run on the paper they're waxy to the feel um, whereas these are very dry really really dry to the feel Co coloring pencils you can if you're very accomplished get some wonderful markings and um etc pastel pencils blend that's the beauty of pastel it blends it blends with itself you can blend colors on on your piece of work you know if i was to put um if i was to put let's say Let's say something daft, like green, down on top of there. So I've got grey and I've got uh, cream. If I then get my blending thing and just blend them, you get a grey-green. It's as simple as that. That's how it works. And you could go on and put another colour on top of there, um, put a hint, a highlight in, a low light, blend it all, and you get a really, really fine finish. Um, they are difficult to get the hang of. I won't tell you any lies, they are. Um, but once you've got the hang of them, just go on to some of the um, pastel um, Facebook pages and have a look at the things that people produce. They're wonderful. 
Coloring pencils, by the same token, they do have a, a good following. They really do. Um, but they're in the world of art, <laughs> they're maybe a little bit more sniffed at. Pastels. Pastels are kind of... You, am I right in saying they're kind of snobby? About paper-colored pencils? Pastels. Do you think pastels yeah. are for... I think people consider pastels to be more for fine art yeah. than, than coloured pencils. Yeah, I'd, I'd go with that. This is a set of faber Castell 120 coloured pencils. Um, you can see... Sorry, that was me banging the microphone. You can see they are... I mean, they're, they're glorious, aren't they? Look at that for a set of colouring pencils. Um, and I love them. I absolutely love using colouring pencils. They are the thing I worry about least when I'm doing them. You can erase them off the paper. You can burnish them together, put one layer down, put another on top. And then very often in these sets, you get a blender. Um, I'm not... I'm not seeing it in this one, but um, very often you get a blender, you can buy blenders or whatever, and you rub furiously over the top of them and you get this burnished effect. Um, they're lovely. I worry about these least when I'm using them, as I say, because they just they just go on so easily, kind of effortlessly. So I would never put anybody off buying, buying these and using them. Uh, this is my second set, incidentally. Um, actually, my third, my third set. I really do love colouring pencils. They're gorgeous. But in the world of art, which is a funny old thing, pastels are regarded more as fine art. I didn't make the rules. I have no idea why that is. But, you know, if you're a pastel artist, oh, I'm a pastel artist, as opposed to I'm a coloured pencil artist. Ooh. Don't know why it is, but pastels themselves come in all sorts of different things. That's, you know, uh, these are the pencils, which you've seen me use. These are the little blocks. Um, these are the blocks that I got in my Caran Dash, Dash set. This box here is £40. I didn't pay anything like that. I'm not that mad. Um, £40 for that. Forty pounds for that. Madness. Um, so yeah, that's the pencils and the blocks. Blocks are called hard pastels, a bit like Conti pastels. Uh, you get a good edge on the corner of them, like this. You know, really sharp edge, so you can draw straight lines quite easily. You can use the flat of it down the page, and you'll get nice, nice coverage. Um, so they have their use too, and then you get soft pastels. Uh, like this um, unison that we're using today. And they take a bit of getting used to, but watch some tutorials on YouTube um, and tell me you don't want to use them because they're soft like butter. They melt onto the page. Uh, they're so expressive. They're wonderful for abstract artists. And, well, everybody, so many people do... Um, portraits of both people, babies, dogs, horses, whatever, using the soft pastels because once you get the hang of them, you can really make them sing and then the finished piece of work looks amazing. So that's all I can tell you, really. They're not interchangeable. That's the main thing to tell you. Pastel pencils and coloured pencils are not interchangeable. They're not the same thing at all. They just happen to look similar. Right, that was a nice little rant, wasn't it? Did you like that, Mr. F? That was a fair bit of a rant, wasn't it? Same idea, I turned off. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I was ranting. I was ranting away to myself, it would seem. I'll bet Carol listened. Here I'm attuned to that tone and automatically go into standby mode. <laughs> You never hear that tone. I never talk to you in that tone. 
Do I? I don't think I do. Just going to put some cream in here because this is quite a light one. There we are. Just push push that back in. Right. So just our last. I'm going to have to put some blue on that because it looks hard now. That's good. So just this last flower to do, guys. Um, I'm going to put some grey in it because I was demonstrating what happens when you put one colour on top of another. I will also say about um, pastels of all, all varieties, pencils, hard, whatever, that you kind of usually get what you pay for. I wouldn't necessarily say that about the Caran d'Ache, although I do really love them. Um, but there's a sort of middle ground, um, particularly with the pencils, where they put down equal amounts of, of pastel, they're equally as easy to sharpen, easy to use, whatever. And it's it's worth doing your homework uh, on YouTube or listening to me when I tell you that um, the best ones I have found uh, pencils are the Faber-Castell Pit pencils and um, these Car Carbothello, Stablo Carbothello. They, they to me, the middle of the range price-wise and they're really good. Um, they're good at making marks. They do what you want them to do. So I'm kind of making arbitrary marks in here, really. Knowing that there will be a region of white to come in on top of it. This one's pretty much all shadow, to be honest. Um, what was I going to do there? I was thinking to myself, I'll do whatever it is, and now I've forgotten what it is. Oh, cream, that's right. So it just needs a little bit, I think, just to bring it in with the, with the rest of them. I do really love this cream and white together. It's really nice. Okay, so let's set that into the page. You can tamp, you can blend, it's up to you. So sort of doing a bit of both here really. I don't want strong looking lines on it, as you can see. Just the ones that look really strong just blend with small circles rather than just tamp. I think that's one of the main differences between the pastels and the colour pencils. When you put the colour pencils on, where you put it is where it stays. Yeah. With the pastels, you can move them round. Yeah, you can move them round. And blending is just... It's just fantastic with pastels. Right, so in we go with the, um, the unison. This comes down because it's sort of folded over. There's just a little light edge on there comes down to here and there's a sort of section down here it's a bit whiter uh, this one the whole top edge of this it's very white yeah sorry Carol's just said she looked at a do and studio pencils and they look like the art posh artist ones to get you going the studio ones will be fine but the studio ones uh, aren't the ones they're not the professional artists ones um, usually, I would say, go, well, go for the best that you can afford, really. I mean, you don't want to be spending loads. Of, it's this funny catch-22. We've had it with um, with acrylics as well, haven't we? If you go for a cheaper brand, 
then it doesn't have the pigment in that the more expensive one would have in. So you try it out, you think, I can't do this, it's not working out properly, where actually it's not you, it's the paint or it's the pastels or whatever. So, yes, go for the studio ones just to find out if you like doing it. But be warned, it won't be the best you can be. Having said that, Derwent, for example, I think produced 70, 60 or 72 colours in their pastel range. You know, don't go ahead and buy that uh, at this stage. Make sure that you like it first. Um, maybe a little pack of, of 12 um, general pastel pencils. See how you get on with them. See how you like them. Maybe you could explain the sharpening um, for Carol, please because she's going to whittle through 12 pastels fairly quick if she doesn't know how to sharpen them. Well, I think they're the coloured pencils, they aren't pastels. Oh, coloured pencils. Oh, she, right. She hasn't got any pastels, that's what ah, she was right. saying. Ah, right. Ah, I see. And that's why she wanted to know the difference. Oh, right. Oh, sorry, I've uh, misconstrued that. I think as a general rule, anything that uses the word studio yeah, or student. Or student is, is beginner's yeah. range. Yeah, yeah. Say Slightly right. cheaper. Slightly. Such good a quality. Yeah. So you're left with the eternal dilemma of is it you or is it, a, you know, pastel or acrylic or whatever it is that, that you're using. Um, it is a tricky one to know what to tell you, really, because... You know, I don't know if you're going to always want a pastel. I mean, if you are, brilliant. But you need to know if you can do it, really. Are you anywhere near Keswick, by any chance? Um, because Derwent have their factory there. Actually, they don't, but they have um, a pencil museum there. And if you go into the cafe uh, in at the pencil factory, they have a selection of their um, pencils, pastels, uh, ink tents, which is another lovely thing, um, or everything, They've, uh, in, like in a jar in the centre of the, your table. So you get your coffee, you come back, you sit at your table, and there's this jar of Derwent beauties, and there's lots of little notepads and stuff around. So you sit drinking your coffee whilst you're pastling away or whatever it may be. And if they like it enough, when you've gone, they stick it on the wall. So um, that's nice if you live near uh, Keswick. I would definitely say go along there and you'll get to try out all of their products whilst drinking a coffee. Couldn't be any better, really, could it? We could have a road trip. We could have a road trip <laughs> to Keswick. <laughs> that would be excellent. I'd love that. Um, right, I'm going to put the centres in of these. And then see if we need to go back and strengthen anything up. Uh, where's my... Oh, yeah, road trip to Keswick. That sounds just the job. <laughs> They'd wonder what's hit the blinking um, cafe, wouldn't they, with all of us lot? And that one comes over this one, so don't put any of those. They do, yeah. In fact, one day I was there. How did I get roped in for that workshop? They were just starting a workshop, weren't they? Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember paying for it. Was it for the ink tents? No, it was for the watercolour pencils. But I just don't remember paying for it. It's not to say I didn't, but I, I just don't remember it. We can't go back there then. <laughs> yeah, we can. I didn't do anything <laughs> wrong. 
Actually, if you have a look around in your local area, if you get your local newspaper or whatever, these uh, little orange spots over here look a bit tame. I'm going to have to going to have to jiggy these up a bit. Um, yeah, in your local paper, have a look. Very often, um, or even Facebook, you know, your local Facebook selling page. Very often, actually, um, people doing workshops will advertise them in there. Um, they could be coloured pencils, they could be pastels. I've been to pastels workshops before. Make sure you pitch yourself at the right level. You know, don't go for a professional one if it's your first day of getting your pastels out of the tin. Um, but that's just common sense. Um, unlike me, I actually went to a beginner's one. Um, and I'm not saying I'm a blinking genius, of course I'm not. But it was a bit tiresome, to be honest. It's in me, Mrs. Big Head, eh? I don't mean it that way, but, you know, if you've got beyond baby steps, you need somebody to push you a little bit further. Right, okay, so is there any part of it that looks like it needs something else? Mr. Fix-It, can you see any glaring holes in my piece? In the pants? Not my pants, they've got glaring holes in them already. But <laughs> <laughs> your piece looks fine on camera. Looks fine on camera. Let's not, let's not examine it any further then, shall we? Right, it's important that you always sign your pieces. Don't forget that. They are your pieces. Be proud of them. Own them. Sign them. I'm just going to give that a final rub over. Uh, if you missed this at the start, I was just explaining, this is glassine paper. We own it because I, when I store my canvases, we put this between the canvases to stop any contact of, with the paint with something we don't want. This is a Posca pen. You may be new to these too, so I'll show you what these are. These are acrylic paint in a pen and they come in different nib sizes. Uh, this size is the little one at one mil. No, 0.7 mil. This one is the next one up, which is one mil ish. Um, that's what they look like. Posca, P O S C A. And I, I have them that go right up to big, fat, 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 fat ones. Um, but I use them to sign my name on my work. So I'm just going to put it there. Make sure that you put uh, put it up a little bit from the bottom and in from the side because if people frame them, not that I'm saying anyone would want to frame that, but if people frame them, um, sometimes if you put it so near the edge you can't actually see that it's your work and that's not good. We want everybody to know who did it. So there's my signature. So now it's the groovy time when we take the um, the masking tape off. And if you've done a really big piece and you've gone right up to the edges, like a seascape or something like that, and you've gone right up to the edges, when you take this off, it is a revelation. This masking tape wants to stick to that Murano paper. I don't like that Murano. I'm not recommending that myself. Um, you might find that you like it, but I like Clairefontaine pastel matte as a paper myself. Um, pastel matte's more like card, isn't it? Whereas that's more like paper. Yeah, this is more for sketching, really. But I thought it would, and it has held up to what we've put onto it, really. Um, so, there we go guys, just get rid of this out of the way, just so can put it flat down on the table and you can see, oh, I've got, let me put it there, there's all pastels on the bottom of it, so let's put it there for the time being, um, and you can see what I've been up to. Probably doesn't look its best on my... Um, backdrop here but <clears throat> it's a 
And what does this measure again? Uh, is it an 8x10? I don't think it. I don't think so. It might be. It's an 8 by 6. 8 by 6. That's right. I chose 8 by 6 because lots of people do frames that sort of size. So it could be framed very easily. If you are going to frame your pastel pieces, sorry, you can't shut me up today. If you're going to paint your pastel, frame them, make sure that you frame them with a mount around them and then glass over them. Because even if you've used fixative, which we never got around to discussing, did we? Could you pass me the dolly over, please, so I can explain? Um, it's good to keep this away from the glass. Here is an example. Here's the, uh, the dolly that you, you will have seen around my page. Um, so she's, she's at the back, then there's the mount, then there's the frame. So she's a distance, albeit a little distance, distance of two pieces of card, away from the glass on the front. And that's her safe as houses. She's fine there. But even say, saying that, I did give her a spray of Windsor & Newton Professional Fixative. Um, it's on Pastel Matte. Pastel Matte says that you don't need to use a fixative. Eek. I think you probably do. So that, that's that. Make sure that you frame it behind glass and at the back of a mount. Um, and that's that. Uh, this is the fixative that I use. Windsor & Newton Professional Fixative. I know people use hairspray. Ladies and gents, this is fine art that we're doing here. Don't use hairspray. It's, um, it's for students and people who can't afford proper stuff. And I can't really afford proper stuff, but I think my work is worth it. And I want you to feel that, that all the hours of, that you've put into your work, it's actually worth spraying it with a proper fixative. I'm really in school mistress mode. Right, well, it's going to have to come to a halt, I'm afraid, because I've done what I set out to do. Dorothy Smith, if you're watching and you do your Hawthorns, please could you share it with us when you've done them? Um, I'm not so sure about the, the crisscrossy background. don't know. It was just a trial. Don't look too bad, I suppose. So there we are. There it is. In all its glory. Okay, so I shall find something nice for us to paint next Saturday at four o'clock. Um, it's probably going to be acrylics, I would say. Probably. I don't know. I don't know until Saturday at three o'clock what it's going to be, but we'll see. So I'll see you then. Uh, I might pop up middle of the week, you never know, sometimes do. Thank you very much for joining in. I've really appreciated your company and bye for now.